Ok, Shalom, Shalom, Kwam Yashala, Koholoimla, Yahweh Bashmi Abashai, Bahashem Rechachachadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth and just want to say the water to all the Akim and Achwaf that's out here sincerely, keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to the best of their ability. Jachanan Waf, just coming at you with another quick lesson. Praying that it's edifying by the spirit. And basically, you know, we have to do these lessons to put our enemy on the spot. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you have enemies. And these enemies of yours, they are in Congress. They are Republicans. They're Democrats. They're police officers. They're nurses. They're doctors. <laughs> you know, the so-called white man is not your friend. These people have a mindset of perpetually enslaving you. And, and, and if you ever bring up slavery, it, 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 they're never going to agree that it was really evil. You know, they're, they're not going to agree that the things that they done was was um, evil. So when the brothers go out on the highways and byways and a part of the doctrine that we teach as far as his truth is that you reap what you sow, that you're going into slavery because you enslaved people. They don't want to hear that. But let's get some of this story because um, it's very interesting. Now, this right here is one of your, you know. This guy, you know, is in office, right? But this is how so-called white people really think. And, and it's important that you, you accept that. You can't just sit back and be like, um, well, not all of them are like that. It don't matter if all of them are like that. We're, we're not trying to figure out which ones are or which ones aren't. Because it's easy for them to come to the job, smile, hey, how you doing? And you will never know that once they get home, because you ne they don't invite you to their houses. You're not gonna, these so-called white people are not gonna invite you to their house. And if they did invite you, it's not even wise to go. <laughs> for real. For real, for real. But these people have a perpetual slave, um, 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 perpetual hatred for you. And, and, and it goes back to Esau and Jacob. It actually goes back to Cain and Abel. They're never going to like you. They're never going to love you. And it's best that you know that you have enemies. It's best that you know that you have enemies. How, you, you know, you can't. <laughs> You're in a war, man. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are in a war whether you want to be in it or not. Everywhere that these people have enslaved you and, and scattered you and, 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 and giving you these bullshit names like African-Americans and Jamaicans and Haitians and Cubans and, you know, Dominicans, Latinos, they've conquered you, giving you names that they want you to have. And they're not going to let you know that you truly are the, the royalty of the earth, that you're Hebrew Israelites, that the Lord thy God chose you to be a peculiar people. They're not going to let you know that. Anyway, let's get off into the sum of this because this this is a real I love it when they 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 do it like this. I love when they come out and really show who they really are. I love people like this guy Tom Cotton. I'm not mad with this guy. This is the way all of them should be. That way you'll know that he's a snake and you're not hey, you can run around this snake you want to and you get bitten, no one is going to pity you. The scriptures talks about who would pity a charmer. So it says, exploring Tom Cotton's controversial remarks on slavery, the necessary evil of white supremacy, right? Tom Cotton, a U.S. senator from Arkansas, has been making headlines lately due to his controversial remarks on slavery. His remarks have sparked heated debates among Americans, with some believing that slavery was necessary and others calling it evil. In this article, we will explore the necessary evil of white supremacy, Tom Cotton's GOP bill on slavery, Seth Meyers' first pitch, and how we can correct the 1619 falsehoods. See, see, they don't, they don't want you to know. They, matter of fact, if it was up to these so-called white people, you wouldn't even know that you were slaves. That's what they're trying to do to the children right now. The children go to school. They don't want nothing to do with critical race theory. They don't want the, uh, uh, your children to ever know about slavery. So they'll grow up and teach their ch children about slavery and their children about slavery. See, they want to get rid of that shit. They want to get rid of it because it's, it's an embarrassment to them. They're, they're truly embarrassed by showing the type of savagery that they, they've shown. OK, it says. I really want to just get to the point, but let's read into this. Introduction to Tom Cotton. Just think about a name like Tom Cotton. <laughs> you come across a motherfucker in the streets named Tom Cotton, you should be trying to get as far away from him as you possibly can. That, that's that got white supremacy written all over it. It says Tom Cotton is a U.S. Senator from Arkansas and a member of the Republican Party. He is a former, former 
Army Ranger and military veteran who served in Iraq and Afghanistan, Cotton is an outspoken advocate for conservative values and policies and an outspoken critic of the Democratic Party. And you know what? Them Democrats are even worse than this guy right here. The, see, the Democrats, they're able to disguise their hatred a lot better. A, a, a guy like Joe Biden. See, I choose Tom Cotton over a guy like Joe Biden anyway, because Joe Biden, he's a damn he, he's he's worse than this guy, Tom Cotton. But he but he people want to wouldn't expect that because he's a lot. He's a lot more slithery. You see, it says um, he has been a vocal opponent of the Obama administration's policy on immigration and health care, health care. And he has been an ardent supporter of President Trump's policies. Cotton has recently been making headlines due to his controversial remarks on slavery in a speech on the Senate floor. Now, this guy on the Senate floor, he's on the Senate floor. <laughs> Let me say that again. He's on the Senate floor saying this shit, man. He argued that slavery was a necessary evil that allowed the United States to become a great nation. But he's telling the truth, right? Because America wouldn't be great without you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And they'll talk all that, go back to Africa shit all they want to. But if every single Negro was to get up and go back to Africa, this place would plummet within a week. They can't survive without you. And they're, and they're not going to let you go nowhere. Matter of fact, it's a scripture talks about that. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Yep. Jeremiah 50 and 33. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah, which is the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, the uh, uh, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you so-called blacks, you're from the, 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 the Judah, the southern kingdom. You so-called blacks, you so-called Jamaicans and um, so-called Haitians, you're from the southern kingdom. You so-called Native Americans, um, La um, Latinos, Dominicans, um, Honduran, so to speak, you, you know, all you guys come from um, the children of, I mean, uh, or the tribe of Israel or the northern kingdom, Israel, because the kingdom was split. If you understand the history of the scriptures, that's who the Gentiles are considered to be in the scriptures in the New Testament, the northern kingdom coming back because the Lord is going to put Judah and Israel back together. It's no longer going to be a southern kingdom and a northern kingdom. The kingdom is going to be put back together as one kingdom. The children of Israel. The Lord is only dealing with the children of Israel and he's coming to get us out of the hands of our enemies. These people are enemies of ours. They're never going to allow you to leave here. They're never going to. These people right now are coming up with a way to they want to put a fucking computer in you. And, and, and you know what it is. Um, Revelations 13 to 16. They want to put a fucking chip in you. A perpetual slavery all man a digital all man they want to they they they're, they're these people don't plan to ever let you go they just want you to just run out and be stupid as hell and vote as if your vote is going to matter these people have had it out for you since the beginning of time and it's not going to change until the lord yahweh shy which the world eagerly calls jesus you know with their white jesus which the lord is a dark melanated man you know with a woolly hair deep voice austere man he would have been a negro if he was walking the earth today but what do they give you a so-called white man and get to telling you about how we should kumbaya and all be together when they they rape robbed and pillaged you for 500 years and still doing it and but you're you're equal with them you know with these lies these people are the devil that the bible speaks of man let's get that back again it's a lucky i'm a little excited because these stories man it, it, it burns you but the scripture talks about Though it tarry, wait for it. See, we're waiting. We're, we're patiently waiting, you know, because this type of shit right here, it, hey, it, it, it boils your blood, man. For them to just sit and, and, and so calmly and really believe the shit that this man is spewing. It, it's plenty of them that believe this shit, man. And like I said, again, the Democrats are no, no better. You Negroes, you keep running out here voting for somebody like Kamala. These are the people that's they're fighting for you to kill your babies with abortion. But you go out and vote for them. What kind of love do they have for you when they're they're fighting for you to kill your babies? That's not love. But what do they do? They wrap it. They put it, wrap it all in a pretty bow and give it to you like, oh, you should have, you know, um, um, control over your body. The hell out of here, man. You, you can't trust these people. The scripture says you never trust thine enemy. And you have to know that you have enemies, first off, to, to, to get to a point of not trusting them. 
Jeremiah 50 and 33 again, thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the children of Israel and, and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. See, all these nations that have us, they don't want to let you go. You have them slip with the tongue and, you know, that slippery shit. They be, oh, well, you don't like how it is here. Then go back to Africa. But I bet you if every single Negro get up and go back to Africa, which we're not Hamites, we're not damn Africans, we're Israelites that ran into Africa doing. Matter of fact, the same so-called white people came and burnt down our, our place in Jerusalem. We ran from them then in 70 A.D., ran into Africa. And those damn Hamites, those are the, those are the Africans. They're really Hamites. We are Semites. And the Hamites helped the Edomites, which are the so-called white people, enslave us. Africans weren't selling Africans. That's another lot that they've told, man. Let's go back into it, though. So much information, man. Uh, it says, his remarks have sparked outrage among many Americans who, who view slavery as an evil that should never have been allowed to exist. Now, Slavery had to go down. Why? Because the Lord prophesied it. The Lord, that's the way that the Lord done it. So they, they got what they call manifest destiny. And so in somewhat it's true because we broke the law, statutes and commandments of Yahweh. So and one of the things let's go into Deuteronomy. This is one of the curses that the Lord said what happened to us if we didn't keep our end of this contract because we made a contract. That was that first covenant. We made a contract with the Lord Yahweh. And when we broke that contract, we broke our end of what we said we would do. He was keeping his end, always had. But once we broke our end, it's just like a contract, the so-called white man. If the so-called white man have you sign a contract, whether it's on a car, a house, a bike, or whatever the fuck. If you break your end of the contract, don't make the payments, don't do your end, whatever, whatever. They're can, they can going to take you to court and they're going to use that contract to show the judge. And that judge look and see that you signed it and you didn't keep your end. <laughs> Judgment to the... To whoever filed, man. It is what it is. This is Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. Very last verse. And I would advise any of you to read into these um, these curses because these are the curses that's on the children of Israel. This is the reason why you don't have a standing military. And you the only way that you can really get into a military is you got to go to the so-called white man's military. You so-called blacks don't have no military. You don't have no tanks. You don't have no 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 um, fighter jets and shit. You don't have no nuclear weapons. You don't have none of that. You, you just posted up in, in the neighborhoods that these so-called white people done shacked you up in. That lets you know they're um, your enemies. You think these so-called white people will ever give you reparations so you can go and maybe start a new beginning in another country where you're going to get your own military together? You out your goddamn mind. They ain't, gonna, <laughs> they ain't about to allow nothing like that. Deuteronomy 28 and 68, it says, And Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And that word Egypt is synonymous with bondage. It's, um, it's called the, um, uh, uh, the iron furnace as well. It's, it's also known as the iron furnace. Hardship, bondage, man, slavery, hardcore work. You, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you was in Israel, I mean in Egypt, um, and you built them down pyramids. That's why you have that, that pyramid on the back of the American dollar to this day. Because they take a lot of the customs of the Egyptians, man, having you in slavery. And hardcore bondage. They have you to the point where you can't worry about nothing but getting up the next day, going to work and living check to check. You got a few Negroes out here that make a little money that kind of get out of the hood. But when it comes to us as an entire nation of people, we're done. It says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. See, for bond men. And bond women and no man shall buy you. What's that word? Um, um, no man shall buy you. It, it goes off into no no one will redeem you. We're waiting on Yahweh Shai, which the world eagerly calls Jesus. He's the one that's already redeemed us through the blood that he shed for us. But he's coming back to get us literally out of the hands of our enemies. And we're never going into slavery again. And we're going to be in rulership. So I hope this guy, Tom Cotton, keeps the same energy when we're. You know, the same shit he's saying. I hope he has that same mindset when we're whipping this shit out of, you know what I'm saying? His ass. Right. Let me keep it classy because 
like I said again, it said that you will be sold to your enemies for bondsmen and bond women. That that's slave men and slave women. You see, this happened to us, and they call it manifest destiny. And, 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 and like I said again, this all goes down with what we done as far as like Yahweh Shai. I mean, um, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. We didn't keep our end of the rules. We didn't keep our end of that contract, that covenant. So here we are. But guess what? We're in the last days and we're very, 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 very close to our Lord coming back, man. And this right here is a part of them telling on themselves. Matter of fact, let me let me let me get that real quick. I'll come back to this. So I don't want to keep this long. But this is them telling on themselves in these last days. He's actually letting you know he's the wickedness of their people. Because before they used to kind of hide it a little bit more. But now it's just like they're just speaking their minds, right? Psalms 64 and 8. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. And all, th all that see them shall flee away. So you got some of them that's real bold. When Trump came on the scene, Trump made a lot of these so-called white people real bold. You know, they was coming out of the woodworks, man. Like they like they was championship fighters and shit all out of the woodworks. So it made a lot of these so-called white people bold. A lot of them are really, really ashamed of what they done. So they don't really say anything. And, and that, that's a lot of these so-called white people that's Democrats. They're ashamed of what they done because they realize that their their people is them as a race. That's a part of this. And the Lord is going to deal with them as a race of people. Right. Matter of fact, let's get that. Job. Um. 34 and 29. Now, I know I said I keep going. I'm going to go back to the story because I want to get exactly what he said. Job 34 and 29. And this is talking about Yahweh, which the world ignorantly calls um, God and Allah and Jehovah and all these different names. The Lord's name is Yahweh, which means that he exists where he is to be the existing one. It says when he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth himself, when he hideth his face, who then can behold him, whether it be done against a nation or against a man only? So the Lord, he's dealing with nations of people. He's dealing with the individual men and women and children of those nations. But he can build a nation up and he can tear the nation down. And that's what's happening to the so-called white man. See, he, the Lord built them up. And he's built them up to the point of showing his power like in the days of Pharaoh. The same way that he brought us out of Egypt and he showed his power. Through Pharaoh, the way that he dogged him out, killed them all and drowned them all out in the Red Sea. See, the Lord is about to come and do some real damage to these Americas, man. And, and all these so-called white nations, all of them. That's the reason why they had the, the World Economic Forum the other day. Those past four days talking about implementing this and implementing that because Revelation 12 and 12 goes until they know that they have but a short time. They know that they don't have that much time left because the Lord is, is wreaking havoc on this place and he's coming soon. You see. Here you go. You living in a country where it's is 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 they just had another mass shooting. You know, you got, you know, you got a problem when you got Asian people doing mass shootings. That's how fucked up this place is. That's how messed up it is here, man. <laughs> so, you know, this place is doomed when you got the Asians, the Asian Americans doing um, shootouts. Get the hell out of here, man. Let's see what else they got. Now, here, this is what let's get into what he said. Over overview of Tom Cotton's controversial remarks on slavery. In a speech on the Senate floor, and I have to say that again, Senate floor, he actually said this on the Senate floor with other senator, senators there. Tom Cotton, that motherfucker should have been <laughs> escorted out of there. But, hey, it is what it is. This is America. Tom Cotton argued that slavery was a necessary evil that allowed the United States to become a great nation. Now, had you asked him, well, what if it was Negroes that had you enslaved and built this bitch up? Would you like that? I'm pretty sure his answer would have been different. It says he argued that the American greatness was built on the back of enslaved people and, and that without slavery, the United States would not have achieved this greatness. So what he's saying right there is, is us white people were sorry as hell, we're lazy as hell, and we never could have achieved what we achieved unless we had you Negroes. We couldn't have done it. It would have been impossible. So to you so-called white people that's so strong, you're so you're, you're, you're so mighty. Why would you need um, um, uh, another race of people to do all your hard work for you? 
since you're the hard workers of the world, since you're the ones with all the technology, since you're the ones that you're, you're, you're superior. So this man is admitting that the so-called white race in America would not have achieved what they've achieved unless it was for you so-called blacks, right? So at least he's admitting that. He argued that slavery was an unfortunate but necessary evil to endure for the, to endure for the United States to achieve greatness. See? Cotton also argued that the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery, which it didn't because we're still slaves here, was a mistake. He argued that slavery should have been reformed rather than abolished. See, this motherfucker is like, hey, we should be still whipping their backs in. We should have just changed it up a little bit. They shouldn't even have the freedoms of, of, of moving about um, like how they're moving about because we're still slaves here. There ain't no doubt about that. Just because you can you get up and, and, and go through a White Castle's drive through at one in the morning and get you a couple of cheeseburgers, that don't mean that you're free. Because you're not leaving America without the so-called white man's driver's license, his passport, his birth certificate, his social security number, his shots, his medication. You're going to have to show records that you've taken all this so-called white man's shit. And then when you get to the next country, you're going to have to show the next so-called white country that I got a hall pass from my master to be here just for a few weeks or so, right? It says Cotton also argued that the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery, was a mistake. He argued that slavery should have been in reform rather than abolished and that the abolition of slavery caused more harm than good. He argued that without slavery, African-Americans would not have been able to achieve the economic and social progress they have achieved today. You see, this is how they think, man. <laughs> hey, this ain't my words. This is, man. So don't get mad with me. Don't don't try and report me and get me a strike. Get me a strike on my channel because I'm reading what it is that, that the so-called white man really thinks. I like Tom Cotton. Okay, I love him. Hey, I love this guy right here. This right here is your perfect Edomite. I think all you so-called white people should be as brave as this man right here and go ahead and let your true feelings come out. You should really be like this. This should be somebody that you should look up to, right? Anyway. I'm not going to go too, too much. I'm not going into no more of this, man. It's, <laughs> the point is made. The point is made. But let's get a couple more scriptures. This is Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 5. Matter of fact, this is it's a prophecy against Mount Seir. And Mount Seir is another name for Esau Edom, the so-called white man. Because this is where they really come from. They came from the, the um, um, Mount Seir at first, and then, you know, they kind of branched over into the Caucasus Mountains. That's where you get the word Caucasian from. And these are your original um, cave people, cave men. Verse 1, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. And that's what we do. When we go out on the highways and byways, we prophesy against America, the, um, the, the, the kingdom of the so-called white man. This is Babylon the Great. This is their main fort, so to speak, as far as the so-called white people throughout the globe. We prophesy against this place and all the other places where they reside. It says, and say unto it, thus saith Yahweh power, behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. So this is what you so-called white people should be worried about. This is what you should be worried about right here. This is where you should have your mindset at. Don't worry about a person like Tom Cotton talking about how, you know, um, you Negroes should basically still be in slavery. Don't worry about that because this right here is the prophecy of what's coming to this place and it's already in motion and happening. I will lay thy cities waste. So your Chicago's, your Atlanta's, your San Francisco's, your, you know, your Dallas's, your Oregon, all that shit, man. The Lord is about to destroy this entire continent, man, on behalf of the children of Israel. I will lay thy cities waste and thou shalt be desolate and thou shalt know that I am the Lord thy God that I am the Lord Yahweh so you going you going to know just like Pharaoh found out Pharaoh found out hey Pharaoh found out the hard way and the Lord actually hardened his heart and this is this is an um an example of a hardened heart right here this guy Tom Cotton this is the way see the, the so-called white man they're never going to their hearts are not going to soften for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man. You, you will forget about that shit. If it takes somebody 500 years and, they and they're even worse than they were back then, seem like. If they haven't gotten it together in 500 years, how do you think they're going to steal? How do you think this is going to work out and happen? Come on, man. But this is the point, verse 5. Because thou has had a perpetual hatred. 
and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity and the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. So this is the prophecy to you so-called white people. This is your future prophecy right here. The Lord is about to do y'all all kinds of dirty. And guess what? This right here is going to be one of the main ones too. Revelation 13. The last book of the, of the scriptures, man. Revelation 13, verse 9. Let's start there. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So, Tom Cotton, please have the same energy that you have while you're saying on the Senate floor all these things that you're saying. Have that same mentality. You, Because cause you know what? Our kingdom is going to be built up on the backs of you so-called white people. And, or, and you other nations, too. You other heathen nations that took your part. You got your lick in on Israel, too. You so-called Chinese people, you so-called Japanese people, you 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 so-called um, East Indians, um, you damn Elamites. All y'all got y'all lick in on Israel. So keep that same energy because what, the same thing that Tom Cotton is saying, you're going to build our kingdom up and, and, and we're going to chill. We're going to chill, man. We're going to we're going to there's not going to be any more tears. We're just going to be happy, joyful. J drinking real water, drinking, you know, drinking real wine, eating real food fruits and vegetables the air is going to get fresh again the water you know it's just going to be paradise back on earth again man once we go into rulership again man because you so-called white people you done ran this place into the ground you done ran this place into the ground man but let's get this again revelation 13 10 he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword here is the patient Patience and the faith of the saints. So this is what we're patiently and faithfully waiting on. He that leadeth into captivity. That that matter of fact, let's go to you just you reap what you sow. You led into captivity. You happy about it. We're gonna leave and lead into captivity and we're gonna be happy about it. So no hard feelings towards you right now. Do your thing, man. I mean this this is your hey, this is your game to play. You got it right now. This is your kingdom. You know, we're not out here trying to bear no arms or, you know, um, trying to do no harm to the, the so-called white man. Hey, I'm actually I'm very nice to him when I see him in public. I work with him. I've had, I'm very cordial with him, you know, and I'm doing my job. I try and do the best that I possibly can for him. I don't slack, you know. So I, I want the same type of energy to be pushed towards me when I'm a, a, a ruler in the kingdom, you know. And I pray that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh will allow me to endure and make it. To that point, man, because I really want to be a part of, of, of what was done to us. You know, I want to be one of those officers or one of those soldiers or one of those um, elected officials, so to speak, you know, from on high. That's going to rule, you know, what portion of land that the Lord had me allow me to rule, you know. Yeah, how about this? Right. Galatians six and seven. And it reads, be not deceived. Yeah, is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth. That shall he also reap. And I'm willing to bet you Tom Cotton is probably a Christian. I'm willing to bet you with a name like Tom Cotton, I bet you he believe in white Jesus. So if he believe in white Jesus, <laughs> uh, you know, white Jesus, and you know, that hey, they don't believe that the Lord. Some of them probably do believe that the Lord is a dark, melanated man. They know, you know, but they, they're not going to admit to it. They believe in sweet white baby Jesus. And um, they believe that they're going to rule forever. They, they don't ever believe that their the scriptures talks about that they don't believe that they're going to go down um that america is ever going to be stopped they don't believe that the so-called white race is never going to go into into slavery they believe that their 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 children are going to wake up and and carry on generation to generation until they come back in the reincarnation and they get the rule again and the cycle continues but the lord is about to do this place all kinds of dirty man so all that free labor that you got in you don't you, and you and, and this motherfucker is, is bold enough to say it, it should be still going on. So you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans, man, y'all better repent. Because you know what? It's Negroes that's in the American army that'll that'll fight tooth and nail for this place, man. And this place. And this is what a senator thinks about you. But they'll go to the military and get to talking about I'm American. 
They'll go to a whole nother country, rape, rob and pillage and kill other people all for the all in the name of so-called white people, man. After all this shit that they these people have done to their ancestors and still believe that you should be in slavery to this very day. You're going to you're going to get your demise with them, man, if you don't repent and get the fuck away from them. That's why that scripture, it goes off into Micah 2 and 10. We bring this out all the time. Micah 2 and 10. Where you hey, you got to get away from these people because the Lord is about to destroy the so-called white race, man. It's going to be enough of them left around to go into slavery. But this place, America, psh, doomed. Micah 2 and 10, arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. And you know the proof of this being, you know, our people being sorely destroyed. The proof is, is our people actually really think that they're Americans. They're proud to be Americans. They're proud to be with the so-called white man beating to them. And won't think twice about it, neither. They'll argue with you. Jake will fight with you, man, about um, um, this American shit. They'll beat you up over the so-called white man before, you know, they, they'll fight for the so-called white man before they will the so-called black. That's how sorely destroyed we are as a people being here for 500 years. So if you're attached to him, <laughs> this is fair warning, man. This is, if you're attached to the so-called white man and his kingdom in these last days, when the Lord comes, you're going to be destroyed right along with him, man. And you don't want that. You don't want that embarrassment, man. Leave this man alone. Let his country fall. Stop celebrating his weak, whack ass holidays and just go and just do what you're supposed to do. Go to work if you got to go to work. You know, hit the supermarkets, grab your food. Stop celebrating all these whack ass holidays, man. And spending all your money on white Jesus Christmas because that's idolatry. Thanks stealing. Fourth of July. All their, all their holidays are, are murderous or, or idolatrous. You need to detach yourself from this place and wait on your howl about Shimia was shy, man. So with that, I pray that this lesson was edifying. Call me inshallah.